and Red Dead. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, like they're just, like they're taking, they're emptying people's accounts and stuff like that. Yeah, let me pass it along. I think I saw it on. Where is it? You have um, to wonder what motivates. Like, why did hackers feel like they have to do this stuff? You know. Nah, they just want to give people a hard time. Yeah, they but just, like, they why? Just fuck why? With people. Yeah, but it's like, what? What's the point? You know, what's the benefit of being an asshole? You yeah. want to go down and be remembered as an asshole? Then again, there's some people who probably don't care if they're labeled an asshole. Here as long as they're having fun. Hey, I'll send you the. I'll send you the link. Where is it? Uh, where is your account? There you go. But yeah, the. Uh, I had to be honest, it's like, Red Dead and, uh, with Red Dead, you know, griefers are far and few between, but, oh man, are they ever so present in GTA? For real, yeah. You can't, oh. like, there's so many videos I see, can you walk across the entire, uh, San Andreas map without getting killed? Because, well, there's so many... Because a lot of assholes are so tempted to shoot you down, even though you're not doing anything. Yeah, for real. I'm not too bothered by griefers, I just find them annoying. They're just, they're a bit of a hindrance. Yeah. Just, I think they, it's... It used to be, there were moments in the past where it'd be like, Buddy, I am just, I, I just be like, buddy, I am just minding my own fucking business. I think the most annoying is when they just target you relentlessly for no other reason other than, you know. Yeah, like you, you get your revenge and then they get super pissy about it, like, oh, it's on now, okay. You know, it's just like, buddy, come on. <laughs> like, don't you have anything better to do, friend? Yeah. And I think that's what that the what the problem is with uh, the Red Dead fan base to an extent, because it's like. Listen, this is uh, Tony Prince. Yeah, that's Tony. All okay. right. Um, it's like uh, <clears throat> you know, you get the players that are so used to how GTA was so cutthroat, you know, and they want to bring it to Red Dead, but. What they forget is that you got the people that enjoy the nice, relaxing, nice quietness. yeah, just that life of living like a simpler times, living a cowpoke, just minding his own business, fishing for food and shit. It's like this is like this is not Red GTA where you know fuck everything. Yeah, the game was made with simpler intentions, but there's always gonna right. be like a war. Like I. I I know it's it might not work, but I still there's still a demand for private lobbies, and I am yeah. I'm I'll, I'll I'll still back that idea up. Yeah, I will too. But I think maybe they'll only bring private lobbies if there's like um, if there's like something to, to justify it. So maybe like if they add like single player stuff. No, like housing just... prop housing properties. Uh, or like areas that you can like not camp out but like you can go to hotels or something or a theater show like run it own an apartment in St. Denis you know and then uh, like if they add like housing elements they'll probably like not make the map feel too empty you know yeah that would be great um I think if I had to pick one thing that I think has Red Dead's uh, reputation a little bit hindered, but I wouldn't blame Rockstar for this. I blame its uh, fan base. Hmm. It's the fact that it doesn't have, you know, the same type of shark cards as uh, GTA. Well, there's the gold system, though, right? I but... know, but but I know, but unlike, but the thing is, it's very expensive. You know, I think 25 gold is $10, whereas 
in GTA, you know, you can get a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars for one ninety nine or two ninety nine. Hmm. And plus, it's you know, mo money on, and of course, it's gold only. The reason I say that is because you know, you know how GTA players, newer ones, and even kid and kids as and little kids, you know, they're not willing to work for, you know, the cool vehicles in this game. Yeah, they're lazy. <laughs> and so it's like, you don't really have that. You don't really have that in Red Dead. Like, in Red Dead, I think it's expected that you work for this for this stuff. Oh, and, definitely, yeah. And I, th and I think that the, set, the thing is, not many people, the people who are GTA based are not willing to work for the cool stuff in Red Dead. Pretty much, yeah. Sad reality. It's like, I mean, I I would argue that the shark card, the thing is, for me, I look at the shark cards in GTA as like only a stepping stone. Like if you, like, you know, if you, I would say like between the 199 to the twenty dollar one, which if I'm correct, the twenty dollar one is the million one, right? Yeah. Those are like stepping stones. If you like, if you're trying to reach a certain goal and it's like you're so close, or you just want to have some starting money, you know those. So I would say. But of course, Rockstar knows that some crazy ass people are dumb enough to spend a hundred dollars. So why not give them the option of getting eight million dollars for nine ninety nine? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Alright, 76. 24 more to go, baby, and I can get this one out of the way. It's like, I mean, I, I know it's not major, but I can't help but think that because, you know, people, there's a lot of players who would rather buy their power as opposed to earn it. Yeah. That's the that's real that's real draw in because people don't want to grind. There's they people like us that wouldn't mind like grinding to get what we got, even if it's a slog, and then you got to be able to take the shortcuts. We we do have fun, you know. I mean, that's the thing is like when we grind, we have had fun despite it. You know, I know the mission thing that we did before the frontier pursuits was a drag, but when. The Frontier first Pursuits came, oh my god, was it fun to grind. Yeah, that's what I'm oh. going to try to do when I start streaming. I want to... Let's take a look back at like all the other missions, you know, and like just see how they've held up. Wait, did I like, that's this? one... It's like, that's the one thing I would argue that Red Dead Online did right, which was making the Frontier Pursuits, at least... The first three, you know, making them fun and giving you something to do. I mean, I'm not, I still can't get behind them for making them 25 gold. But as I've said many times, you know, that that money is put to good use if, because they're money makers. And they'll get you doing something rather than just, you know, right doing exploits of course then again of course they're of course then again you can't really get behind their recent frontier pursuit <laughs> what I'm thinking is I think what I'll do for the stream like the PS4 version since it's now just you me and Ollie we'll do the missions in sequential order good and then we'll be we'll start out as bad guys and then work our way as good guys and then after that, be we'll like do, a, like, I'll see if I can get Patrick, like, a moonshine business, and we'll so try So we're gonna it. be, like, like, uh, doc, uh, Dr. Octopus, or whatever he is from Spider-Man, like, Spider-Man 2, you know, start off as bad guys, and then work up into good guys. Yeah. Or Darth Vader. Or vice versa, like, I don't, it doesn't really matter what order. Just, like, but I do want to revisit the old missions again, just to kind of rekindle that old when we first started playing Red Dead you know yeah so it's like and then after that we'll do like uh, 
Patrick's first moonshine delivery or some shit like that, like his first business. And I think after that, like, unless people join us, or actually, what I, another thing I wanted to do was like, I kind of want to do like a video where you, me, and Ollie, we start the the Magnificent Seven thing and we hire other players to just like do do stuff like maybe like own a town sometimes the best way to handle I think the best way to counter Red Dead's kind of uh, loneliness is to like come up with something to do you know like we'll just make our own adventure like let's say we'll take over I don't know roads or something and then Maybe like the first thing we do is like we take over Saint Denis as bad guys, but then we get re reform and become good guys. That could be our excuse. We just raise hell in, in Saint Denis, and then we get set straight. <laughs> like the sheriff or something. Somebody could be like the sheriff. We're like, hey, you kids, don't go around doing that shit or something like that. Like we get put in jail. And I think after that, we'll probably just. I'll stream the campaign. I'll, <laughs> I'll play the campaign and I'll do the, the role play modes. Just something for content. You wanna know the best part about ha you wanna know the funniest part about having a bounty? Hmm. When you have is that, you know, these players are willing to kill you even if it'll cost them. <laughs> Like I was in my Deluxo, I it was a seven thousand dollar bounty. Um, yeah, I don't think he got that money. Our uh, griefer is giving he, you a hard time. Nah, not really. But it was funny if you ask me. They got them, they got the money. They did have the money briefly, but they ended up having to pay to pay for my car. <laughs> yeah, like ten thousand dollars. Over a set, they ended up getting their seven thousand dollar bounty, but they had to pay for my car. I'll be honest, that's the that's for me is my favorite kind of karma, you know. Oh, definitely, yeah. Just as soon as they get the money, it's like it gets it's gotta go to bills, <laughs> just like in real life. It's gotta go to bills. Gotta pay them insurance. Maybe I could join you. Actually, I kind of want to, you know, I want to, uh, this, I want to bother him. I'm just going to be like, thanks for paying for my car. I'll join you, but I'll be on passive mode. How many people are in the thing? Uh, 27. I'm not really doing a lot. Yeah, I don't want to bore you either, because I'm not really looking to get engaged. To thanks. This thanks for replacing my car. Or replacing my car. Twenty more to go. Can I do it? Yes, sir. Can I? Twenty more to go. Okay, this one is by the. Ah, oh, shit! This one's by the Altruist camp. Ah, fuck. This is. You know what he sent me? What? No problem. Well, I think he, I think he's aware that yeah, he ended up paying for my car anyway. <laughs> Well, at least he was nice about it. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you, replaced, he, he, he you got took the it. bounty, but you ended up losing the money anyway. Like, you didn't get anything out of it, man. <clears throat> In a small cave below the Altruist camp. Okay. Below the Altruist camp? <clears throat>
there it is. I wonder if this is the one I missed when I originally did this shit. I feel like Doc Brown this writing this deluxe will just to collect stuff. Like Hoppin's around looking for ancient artifacts. I mean, granted, it's action figures, but still. You know. Artif ancient artifacts. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You know, some people would refer to 80s action figures as ancient artifacts. Okay, this one is on the tunnel to Mount Chiliad. Oh yeah, Biden won the presidency. Oh really? No. Yeah, Trump is gone. He is gone. What was what's Trump's reaction? Kicking and screaming, as to be expected. <laughs> I didn't lose. This thing was rigged. Now well, it's just a question of will things get better. You can only hope, man. It's like, well, it's like the thing I can hope for is that, you know, is that Biden knows what he's doing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude. Trump, yeah. I would sadly say, didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, Trump is a, he's a celebrity. He doesn't know fuck all about politics like at all. He's hey, just, you know, I mean, I felt, I'll be honest, I felt bad that he did end up getting, a uh, COVID. Since, to be honest, I wouldn't wish that upon anyone. But, at the same time, it's like, well, what does that exact, what does that prove? You know, what does that prove? Is that, you know, there is nothing, there is nothing to ignore, you know? This is yeah. serious. If the, if the... If the guy that has, you know, is able, that can get the best medical attention and everything, gets COVID-19, then I think that tells you, yeah, this is a, this is really serious. Pretty much, yeah. The fact that he survived it is... A miracle. But he's... But is nothing I'll give short him of that. Here. I'll give him that. I'm I'm happy that he kind of pulled through. Not that I would defend him at all, ever. It's but like yeah, it's one. Of, for me, it's one of those things. Yeah. Every time you hear a horror story about COVID claiming somebody, I didn't really wish Trump death, but there's shit that he does that makes you want to be like, man, this, this guy is just begging to get shot. You know. It's like, I mean, at the time. You know, at the time, you know, he... <sighs> I, I'm not... I'll be honest, it's like, I'm not his supporter, but at the same time, you know, I'm not a crazy liberal. <laughs> you know what I mean, don't you? Yeah. Those people who so insanely... Like, behind the LGBT movement, who I would say have bastardized that movement now. <laughs> Especially oh. since ha I'm not even sure if it's people who a are of those things that are uh, supporting it now, because you know so many people are now. It's like not people who are anything but are getting offended for these people. Uh, I'll support whatever rights people want me to support, as long as they don't send me Over. messages like, "Hey, big boy." Like, <laughs> I had that one experience where, like, an artist got a little too close for comfort. You know, it's like, look, I'm down for people being transgender and bi, pan, non-binary, whatever. Yeah, I'm but, for all of that. But... but my general rule of thumb is, look, I'll support you. You all are human. You can have your rights. But don't force me to join you. Don't fucking touch my characters and... 
fix them on Twitter or I'll kick your ass regardless of who you are. <laughs> like, I'm an equal yeah. opportunity fighter. You know? I think it's part of the just, reason why like, I'll support aggravates. you, but just don't... I'll be like, like, I'll support you, but don't touch my shit. <laughs> I think what aggravates me so much about it is just the fact that, you know, people... I think it's just the, the fact that so many people now... It's reached a point now where... People are making changes to a lot of our media, and well, folks could care less if you know. It's easy to tell, I think, when something feels like pandering or something feels a little forced. You know, like I think for me, what stands. Yeah. Go ahead. What stands to me is like uh, I think I told you about what happened with Thomas the Tank. The Thomas the Tank Engine thing, something I grew up with. How now, how they switched over to trying to, uh, trying to appease to the LGBT community by taking out two of its original characters and replacing it with two very stereotypical female characters. Oh god, the spicy Latina or something, and there's like the, the, the token black character or something like that. Yeah, li I'm, oh no, yep, that's exactly what they did, is like, you know, you, like, if you saw the main cast right now, they, it is abysmally painful to look at. It's like, you got the original characters whose designs are simple, but then you got the obvious token, diversity token character. Oh god. And it's like, and her problem? She doesn't have much of a personality. She's just there. Just there to fill uh, quota. Wanna... <laughs> yeah, she's like, she's meant, and, you know, you want to know the crutch that they fall back on with her that they think is going to make people look at her as, you know, progressive? What? She's from Kenya in Africa. Oh my god. God. <laughs> and she just and that's all she says like there's there's episodes about other characters and she's like like oh yeah this is very different from the from the country that I come from <laughs> I'm looking at the Washington Post article uh, and like the question uh... <laughs> Like, does Thomas the Tank Engine really need diversity? They're all fucking trains. They're tra They're just they're fucking trains. Train. Exactly. Just fucking train. They don't need to be like a fuck from a fucking country. Just, I mean, just, just have like you know the Japanese monorail if that's what they really want to include or something. Or I don't you know. You know the. F you know what's funny is they have had diverse characters. They had one character. In fact, when the show moved to CG. They had a character from Japan come in, but the guy, the Japanese character, he was really, they wrote him really damn good. Like, they didn't make that his defining quality. That's the thing with a good character, is like, you don't, is that their, their nationality as well as gender shouldn't be what uh, defines them. But we live in a time now where that's what defines any character, right? Pretty much. I'm from I'm from I am from Kenya, and I am very helpful and very very nice. Yeah, I don't get it. Like, I mean, I guess for, I guess I bring it up. Just does not work. I I guess I don't know. I guess it, I bring it up a lot because I think I told I I told you guys I I grew up on Thomas the Tank Engine. It was a massive part of my childhood. I would even argue that it's one of the reasons that I got into got back got into drawing were you ever you did you used to watch like the old sunny time station uh, I just watched the original like the old stuff the stuff that had uh, like this the original stories that were narrated by uh, Ringo Starr and George Carson the first I remember my mother had the show on when I was a little kid. I don't know if I paid attention to the uh, Shining Time Station stuff, but I do remember, um, do yeah. remember watching the old cartoons from the 80s. 
I did watch the hit era of the show, which is where a lot of people say it would it has fallen down because on the hit show, on the hit channel, it's it's gone from being like stories for kids to just being a uh, a baby show, as people call it. For me, I think it was uh, I used to watch it. I didn't watch it like on a regular basis. It was like it was another one of those shows where it was like when you're I when I was a kid, uh, PBS would run like a a childhood. The 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 PBS kids block would run on like after school or on a weekend. Or, oh, actually no, during the week it would usually run like I would get home at school like around three o'clock, and then they'd run like the usual. They'd play the Arthur's. The Ghost Riders, stuff like that, and then like on this, and then if I had like the day off, Thomas the Tank Engine would probably like be around one o'clock. It'd be like an early show. Like it, it was good for its time, but I usually kind of I liked more of the wraparound segments for Shining Time Station. It was like the Thomas the Tank Engine stuff was more like the middle parts. Like, there was yeah. always, like, these kids at, like, the train station, and they had, like, a Robbie Rotten kind of character, like, in between. I, I really don't remember the whole details. It was, it was something to that effect. And then Thomas the Tank Engine would be there to be, like, the the crux, you know, it, like, to prove the... Like, if the story was about jealousy, then, you know, it would be, there'd be an episode about Thomas the Tank Engine talking about, like, oh, this train is jealous, you know? It was just, like... It wasn't really my preferred show, but I could see why people liked it. Train, trains are pretty cool, I guess. Yeah, there's a, they, of, there's, there's a lot of autistic people that love that show. Oh, okay, well, yeah. <laughs> no, no, not, not that I'm calling you autistic or anything. I don't like, know. I, I think it's just... I mean, if you're... I wouldn't... I would say those people are the ones who like the hit era of the show, the Sharon Miller era. Which is the era where it was called a baby show. Maybe. The, yeah. Like, I, I, I prefer the original show. And, th in fact, they had a era where they did try and bring back the, uh, what made the show so great. Full, I got full metal ja jacket rounds now for my rifle. <laughs> nice. But, you know, I'm gonna stick to the good and true regular rounds. Is that drainage pipe? It's not there. I mean, I keep watching this video now, that I keep watching this video about the recent seasons of Thomas. I think it was done by a guy called uh, the Unlucky Tug, and he's talking about how the the last season completely destroyed the show and the and the legacy that the show had, or just the characters in general had. I'm still always just gonna remember it as the show that had fucking Ringo Starr in it. And that's <laughs> when Thomas played the Beatles records. That's when Thomas. That's when Tom. It's called the Thomas White Scott Album, Blister. Thomas. <laughs> Thomas got blisters on his. Have fingers. you played the record backwards, Thomas? No, no," said the conductor. "Don't play it backwards. That's a oh. demonic message, Thomas." But then Thomas didn't listen and play the demonic record. And listen to John Lennon's speech about God and Satan. <laughs> yeah. I always mm. found it cool. I actually did find it cool that a f former Beatle was the first narrator for the show. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <sighs> but, you, like, now seeing that the LGBT community has caused the show to plummet this badly, it's like. Know, what can you like blame people for being pissed off cuz the biggest issue that it has <coughs> is that because it's company that owns it Mattel you know how it, you know how every company is they're not worried about making a show good or anything they're worried about 
you know, selling as well as looking good for the press. Yeah, that's exactly it's all what they about did the with money. 